Hello, I'm Sami Buzzard, a postdoctoral researcher in sea ice at University College London, and I'm applying for a Software Sustainability Institute fellowship because I want to encourage early career researchers to take up better software practices earlier and work to find new and better uses of software for the cryosphere community as a whole. So a bit about me to start. I've just this year finished my PhD at the University of Reading's Department of Meteorology, and part of which involved creating software to model surface lakes on Antarctic ice shelves. So here we have a satellite image of the Larsen B ice shelf in Antarctica. White is the ice and dark is the ocean. And as time goes on, you can see that the ice shelf had a spectacular collapse event. It hit headlines in 2002 when an area of ice was lost in less than a month, um, about twice the size of Greater London. If we look to a zoomed in version of a similar satellite image, we can see on the surface of Larsen B, um, in the red box in the corner, there were these sort of black splodgy features. Now these were lakes that were present on the surface of Larsen B. They were several kilometres across and a few metres deep, and they're thought to have been key in the sudden collapse of the ice shelf. So I was investigating how these lakes form, so we can try and see if this could be happening to other ice shelves in Antarctica in the future. Um, so I created software that models the development of these lakes, and the software is modular, so it's easy to change and add to, and it's also open source. But it wasn't always like that. Um, I came into my PhD with relatively little coding experience. Um, I learned enough to get by, but I always knew at the back of my mind I could do better. So eventually I bit the bullet and attended a workshop that was in the style of software carpentry um, and learned about things like version control and how to use them properly. And I realised that not only are these things not difficult or scary to use, they could actually have saved me weeks, if not months, if I started using them earlier. So that's one of my big motivations in applying for this fellowship, is I want to make sure that others don't make the same mistake. So in addition to producing journal articles of the output of my science, throughout my PhD I enjoyed communicating science and scientific concepts in ways that everyone can understand. Um, I've given some big public lectures, and I've got quite far in some science communication competitions such as FameLab and Three Minute Thesis. Um, I was also fortunate enough to be able to work for the Government Office of Science for a while, um, where I wrote briefings for the Government Chief Scientist and members of the Prime Minister's Council for Science and Technology. And that involved often writing about quite complicated concepts in ways that someone without any background in that area could understand. Um, an advantage of working in the polar regions is that this work can also get a lot of media attention too. Um, so I've, I've, for example, had the opportunity to speak on the Radio Force Today programme. In my current position, I'm now a postdoctoral researcher at UCL, where I'm working collaboratively in developing a software product that tracks snow on top of sea ice in the Arctic using satellite information. Um, so I'm using a lot of the software good practice that I've learned during my PhD, and I'm trying to improve, for example, by learning Python to make my work more accessible, but I know that I still have a lot more to learn. So my motivation for the fellowship is not only to help others to learn better practices earlier and encourage them to not be as scared of software practices as I was, um, but also to develop skills within the whole cryosphere community to improve our use of software. And the ways in which I plan to do this, there are two options which I would like to do. And um, First of all is using the UK Polar Network. Um, so the UK Polar Network is an organisation that aims to create opportunities and collaboration for early career polar researchers. Um, we've got over 600 members at the moment, and I've had various roles with them over the years, including a year as co-president. And I think they're the perfect platform not only to promote existing software courses like Software Carpentry, um, but I'd like to use them to run a specific software course for polar early career researchers, maybe tagging it onto an existing conference so people don't have to travel to get there. Um, I recently conducted a membership survey for the UKPN and the results suggested that courses and networking opportunities such as this are what people want to see us doing and the fellowship could be a good way to fund this. I also plan to use the forthcoming Turing Institute workshop, Data Sciences for Climate and Environment, to scope out possible future collaborations, maybe leading to a data hack event to help tackle the large data problem that we have currently in climate science. So this workshop is interdisciplinary, there'll be climate scientists and statisticians and machine learners discussing ways that we could improve the use of the huge amount of satellite data that we currently have. Every year we have petabytes of data 
um, produced and they're not necessarily stored or shared in the most efficient way. I spend far too much of my day often just getting data, let alone using it, and it's something that we as a community really need to tackle. Um, but these are just some of the ideas of things I'd like to do. Um, from watching presentations of previous fellows and reading their blogs, um, it's very clear that they're really enthusiastic about the experience and they gained a lot more from it than they ever could have predicted. Um, so I would really like to use the fellowship to increase my networks and improve my use of software and become known as an example of best practice. Ultimately, I want to be a lecturer and I want my students and co-workers to follow best practice. Um, I often see or hear people questioning why you would want to share code. People are naturally scared of this. I was terrified of sharing my PhD code, but if I do it, then others will follow and it will ultimately lead to better science for everyone. So thank you very much for listening and I look forward to hearing from you.